when history books are written, we'll look back at this period and we'll see the sharp rise in inflation, uh, which was caused by massive supply chain, really supply shocks from COVID and the war in Ukraine. And you will see so sharp increase and it feels like it's so slowly coming down. But when the charts, when you start looking at these charts in history, this decline will be look very like it was very rapid and we will descend into deflationary ter territory. Uh, Don Luswin wrote a, a, a piece, uh, it was an editorial in the Wall Street Journal, I believe, uh, about this. And I think the Fed uh, is going to be blamed for sending us into a deflationary period. Already we're getting negative uh, signs for guidance. Home Depot, it's same store sales down three to five percent for the year now they're expecting due to the emergence of ai and advancements achieved by arc invest ceo kathy woods's portfolio of exponential technology ventures her flagship fund arc has had a phenomenal start to the year rising 30 percent year to date but kathy often the unconventional investor thinks that something more fundamental will drive the adoption and growth of her innovation-based platforms, particularly blockchain and artificial intelligence. It is deflation, by the way. While most economic and financial experts believe that high inflation will last for a longer period of time than most anticipate, Kathy believes that deflation will arrive quickly and aggressively. She contends that high inflation rates brought on by the pandemic's immediate transition into deflation will be dramatically reduced when we look back on this period of time in history. This is so because innovation and technology are inherently deflationary. Jobs, goods, and services may be produced in large quantities at much cheaper costs when robotics and artificial intelligence advances start to replace hundreds upon thousands of humans. The consumers can then benefit from this cheaper pricing. Yet, why is deflation advantageous for exponential technologies like cryptocurrency or Kathy Woods' innovation platforms? The reason is that the Fed and other central banks will be able to decrease interest rates while increasing the production of money to boost economies if we continue to experience big drops in inflation numbers. When this occurs, assets that are more exposed to the risk of technology and cryptocurrencies typically excel over all other assets. In her most recent interview with Bloomberg, Kathy explains her deflation thesis and discusses the investment decisions she's pursuing with the particular exponential opportunity, artificial intelligence, which, in her opinion, is greater than Bitcoin. Recently, Nvidia shares jumped 30% in just one day after the company gave higher than anticipated guidance for rising AI demand. Kathy pulled out of her investment in her primary portfolio in January of this year, despite having a long history of being a positive investor in NVIDIA. She explains why she sold out in this article and why she's looking at new chances in the industry. I think many companies are going to feel a hard landing and it's going to come both from units and prices. Uh, I think more and more companies are reporting this on their earnings report. These, these uh, economic statistics that take all the oxygen out of the room are hugely lagging and they're not even getting it right. If you look at the digital world, gross domestic product was, that statistic was devised in the industrial age. We're in the digital age right now. Yeah. So we pay more attention to gross domestic income, which tends to be more accurate as we're seeing these inconsistencies. We're very positive on NVIDIA. We have been very positive on NVIDIA. We bought it down when it hit nearly $100 uh, in the fourth quarter last year. Uh, and, and then it tripled as some of our other uh, AI-oriented stocks stood still. So, uh, you know, we're looking at, believe it or not, many people do not believe this about us. We're looking at relative valuations of uh, names in the AI space. And we were looking at uh, NVIDIA at 25 times sales, which is where it is. And Tesla, which is probably the biggest AI story out there, is at six times earnings. I mean, not earnings, six times sales. UiPath yesterday uh, reported it is a beautiful AI play. It too is at six times sales. 
details. And as far as NVIDIA goes, there are a few reasons we uh, we take some pause. It, it still meets our minimum hurdle rate of return, so 15% at a compound annual rate over five years. And so you'll see it in some of our more specialized portfolios. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're looking for uh, the better values. But the, the risks to uh, NVIDIA would include cyclical. When I hear shortages, shortages, shortages about GPUs or anything, I begin to think about um, about the cyclicality of a group. Uh, competition. Tesla is coming up with its own chip. Uh, Meta platforms, Google, their own chips uh, for more specialized large language models. Uh, and, and then the tech itself. We're learning from Meta platforms. The Llama model uh, is able to do with less computing power, but more data, yeah. uh, it's able to deliver better models. So there are puts and takes here, as there always are. People who understood the NVIDIA story, we were pounding the table on it on 2014, you know, really till 2021. Um, and many people actually put it into their portfolios, their own portfolios, and they may have held it. We have not gotten uh, much pushback. And the reason is people know uh, that we are on we are on AI, but we're doing it in a little bit of a differentiated way. NVIDIA has become a check the box stock. That's why the valuation is where it is. Um, uh, but we are looking for those plays uh, that have not only the, the vision from management team point of view and broad distribution, but also proprietary data and AI expertise. So uh, we're just pivoting to another set of plays that most people have not discovered yet, yeah. much like they did not understand that NVIDIA was an AI play, really, until very recently. Well, uh, for Google, uh, chat G GPT was either the worst thing that has ever happened to it or, or maybe the best thing. Uh, we tend to think it's going to be disintermediated, though, uh, by chat GPT and uh, other chat bots. So we're not going to need the kind of search and therefore advertising that drives uh, Google's model. So we, we do worry uh, about that one. Um, Apple, uh, you know, there are many people who think that even Amazon is going to be disrupted not only by social commerce, so people just uh, shopping through Instagram and uh, other other social media sites, Pinterest, um, but uh, it also could be disintermediated as if consumers use chat GPT and other AI tools to say, I want exactly this kind of item at the cheapest price anywhere in the world. Uh, and it would go directly to that source. So, you know, any platform that has served as, you know, an intermediary is, uh, is at risk, we would say. So Meta is interesting to us. We, we uh, do like what it is doing. Uh, we love, love its sophistication and the fact that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is now prioritizing artificial intelligence as opposed to the metaverse, which was really what he was uh, focused on last year. We're interested in Meta's uh, play here. We don't have it in the flagship portfolio. We do have it in other portfolios. If this cycle were to worry, we, we tend to think we're going to have a, a harder landing than most uh, most economists do. Um, if the cycle were to hit it, and, and NVIDIA surprisingly gets hit very hard by cycles because the inventory builds up, build ups, and I would say we're in one of those right now, uh, are so spectacular. If we, uh, if we have a combination of a correction and the recognition by the marketplace, perhaps that some of these models don't have to be as large and don't need as much computing power as more companies use more specialized uh, um, models. Uh, you know, you get the confluence of a reality check. You know, NVIDIA is just a very powerful company. They, they are so exquisitely positioned in the space, but you're paying for it now. Uh, the autonomous taxi network that we believe uh, Tesla is building, uh, it has more data. Talk about proprietary data. It 
has more data on of real world driving miles than all of the other auto companies and technology companies like Waymo put together around the world, we would say, except for perhaps China, because we don't know exactly what's going on there. We do believe that the autonomous taxi platform opportunity is a winner take most opportunity. The company that gets a person in an autonomous vehicle from point A to point B as quickly as and safely as possible yeah. is probably going to get the lion's share of the market. And that company will, in the United States, uh, we believe, be Tesla. And we believe globally that opportunity will scale from zero today to eight to ten trillion dollars in revenues uh, by 2030. Uh, so you can see why we're so excited by Tesla. It is um, it is the furthest advanced from an AI point of view. And it's even becoming a manufacturer of factories um, using artificial intelligence and becoming more and more and more efficient in manufacturing uh, factories and and cars. Uh, we think it's the most e efficient in the world right I'm, now. I'm when history books are written, we'll look back at this period and we'll see the sharp rise in inflation, uh, which was caused by massive supply chain, really supply shocks from COVID and the war in Ukraine. And you will see so sharp increase and it feels like it's so slowly coming down. But when the charts, when you start looking at these charts in history, this decline will be look very like it was very rapid and we will descend into deflationary ter territory. Uh, Don Lustwin wrote a, a, a piece. Uh, it was an editorial in the Wall Street Journal, I believe, uh, about this. And I think the Fed uh, is going to be blamed for sending us into a deflationary period. Already we're getting negative uh, signs for guidance. Home Depot, its same store sales down three to five percent for the year now they're expecting. We got GDI, which is the other side. So gross domestic income, which is the other side of gross domestic product. And they need to equal, but they're at a record gap right now. It's been negative. So in recession territory for the last two quarters, I think many companies are going to feel a hard landing and it's going to come both from units and prices. Uh, I think more and more companies are reporting this on their earnings yeah. report these these uh, economic statistics that take all the oxygen out of the room are hugely lagging and they're not even getting it right if you look at the digital world gross domestic product was that statistic was devised in the industrial age we're in the digital age right now. Yeah. So we pay more attention to gross domestic income, which tends to be more accurate as we're seeing these inconsistencies. So there you have it, Kathy Woods' present day economic view and the steps she is taking in the field of artificial intelligence. Her deflation theory is also very logical. Due to the exponential growth of AI and the several thousand human resources employees that companies have already let go in favor of ChatGPT and other AI technologies, the cost of manufacturing goods and services will undoubtedly increase. This is just getting started now. Just think about how much money will be saved when Uber and taxi drivers are completely replaced with self-driving cars. Undoubtedly, the use of AI and robotics will result in lower prices everywhere. However, when will this happen? Comment your opinion down below. Anyway, how do you guys feel about Kathy Woods' deflation thesis given the most recent developments in artificial intelligence? Now, let us know what you think. Leave your comments below. We appreciate you for staying till the end. I hope you enjoy the video. I would greatly appreciate it if you guys clicked on the like and subscribe buttons and press the bell over there to turn on your notifications. Visit our channel for more coin predictions, Bitcoin, altcoins, and cryptocurrency videos. Have a great day and see you in our next video.